driver's side tail light panel installed moving to the passenger okay i'm going to start this video off uh, with the reality of some replacement panels now i wish i had done this as soon as i received this piece in the mail now luckily <laughs> and before i invested time in it now luckily there was a replacement tail light panel available locally so I didn't have to wait another week just to get this piece and get held up. Now it's not perfect. We had to do a little bit more work to it, but it has the correct angles. Yeah, the other piece was just stamped wrong in a piece this size with an incorrect stamping. Yeah, forget about it. Okay, so that gives us another problem. The uh, In the previous video on the driver's side, you can see or you remember we had cut that piece out formed it to that well because we had invested time in it now we have a compound problem that piece has been removed and it's too big of a deal to try to reuse it so luckily i have enough experience and <laughs> the tools to fabricate this piece and it seems like nowadays I'm doing that more and more and more. And I've come to the point where, hey, unless there's no other option, I'm going to start fixing and repairing the factory panels. Creating my own patches as opposed to uh, buying replacement pieces. Yeah, it's unfortunate. There are some pieces that are worse than others. That's just how it is. The quality has gone down so much. Anyway, so let's get back on track. We've got our uh, sheet metal cut out to fabricate that piece. Put it in the brake. Now we have our uh, flange. And I've over-rotated that slightly. Here's a good shot of it. It's slightly past 90. That's not an issue. Okay, so I made this quite a few years ago. It's just a uh, piece of a uh, leaf spring. Works really well. You don't have to have really fancy, expensive tools. You'd be surprised at what you can make. And not spend a lot of money. Some things you have to, uh, some things you don't. Okay, so we've got our piece, our uh, patch panel, we could, we'll call it, and we have our tail light panel. Now, what this piece has to do is curve around that because we're going to be attaching that, and then we're going to attach that assembly to the quarter panel. Now, these are lines that we're going to be stretching on in order to uh, form that. Now, I have made a little template that fits the uh, tail light panel. And we're going to get our rough cuts in and take off on this, get this thing uh, fabricated. Yeah, the replacement panels that they offer now, the companies, it's to a point where, hey, you're lucky if you get it because we don't make a lot of the things we used to and you can take it or leave it. Yeah, it's really sad. Really sad. Uh, it adds poorly stamped replacement parts really add to the cost of... Uh, restorations so we've got that piece going our way we're going to true it up keep it flat and to accomplish this we're going to use a shrinker stretcher now this is a manual or a foot operated I should say And we work this machine by 
depressing that uh, foot pedal there. Pulls down on a rod. And inside there, there are jaws. There's four separate jaws that either push together or they pull apart. They squeeze together first, then they push or pull. Now, we want to keep it clean. We never use oil in that. Or we never uh, add any type of lubricant. Okay. Let's make some magic. This machine is so cool. Now that's the shape we're going to bend. And we're going to get a rough idea and put some uh, marks on where we're going to start uh, start the bends. Yeah, you can see it starts forming really quickly. Now these shrinker stretchers, they go from uh, not super expensive to uh, very expensive. But let me tell you, unless you're doing heavy gauge all day, every day, you can get by with a quality, least e less expensive machine. I mean, you can see how well it's working. Okay, we're going to have to uh, switch around to the other side. That's why these two uh, shrinker and stretcher are so close together because you, you're you going to have to go back and forth, back and forth. Now, what I'm doing is uh, now I'm straightening that piece slightly. And you can see it's starting to come into shape. You want to keep your workpiece really handy because uh, you have to constantly check. It's looking pretty good. Almost finished. And we always want it to just lay together to the parent metal piece. Like that. Boom. And we're going to double check by clamping it into place. Now, sometimes when you form a piece like this and you, you it looks great and uh, you start to attach it to the piece that you're, it's going to. Well, it can twist and bend out of shape and, uh, yeah, make you stand back and go like, wow, I thought that was done. And now it looks like crap. But on this piece, I think we are good to go. Really nice fit. I think we can uh, get it welded into place. Okay, so I'm going to be punching some holes here for, or on these marks for a plug weld. That's what we're setting it up for. Getting those installed. It's just a little hand punch. I think it's about time to replace the dies in that thing. But before we do, anytime we have bare steel, we always want to coat it. We don't want to make two pieces of metal together without some type of corrosion protection. Big problems later. So we've got a little weld through primer and what makes weld through primer different and much more expensive is that it has zinc in it. Okay, so we've got them clamped back together. 
the two pieces. And we've got our little spot blaster. And that's going to take away the uh, EDP coat and a little bit of the primer. So we can get a really nice uh, weld that we don't have to do a lot of grinding on. But first, we need to address the uh, tail light panel. Now, this was really wide. And uh, we had to shorten that thing up a little bit. There it is all welded out. It is such a shame that you have to do this much work to a new piece. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's, yeah, going forward, and there may be some jobs that I just won't even take on. Especially certain cars with quarter panels now, floor pans, things like that, structure type stuff. You know, that's not an issue. But like this area with the with the deck lid, tail light panel, tr trunk panel, uh, quarter panel. These all have to tie in, and they all have a trim that are real specific. You know, there it has to be right. There's, there's only that's the only way there is to do it. You really can't cheat. I mean, in anything on this, and especially here, we do the metal work correctly. Uh, yeah, it's it's quite a challenge, man. As opposed to, uh, hey, we've got a brand new piece. We're just going to install it. But anyway, we've got this thing worked out. And I can live with that. So we're going to get the piece that we fabricated. The uh, quarter panel patch. Get it welded on. And hey, I'm not afraid to show when things go wrong. I'm not just going to show when things go right. It's like in the beginning of the video, it wasn't anything that I necessarily had done wrong that caused this amount of work. It's like you you start out and you're committed. And if it all goes south, I mean, sometimes it's better just to stop and start over. And I mean, luckily... I've gained enough experience and knowledge and uh, equipment where, yeah, I, I can uh, overcome that. Yeah, some guy just starting out or not a lot of experience, man, I don't know what they'd do. And you can scroll through YouTube, and I've, I've seen a lot of videos where a lot of guys run into the exact same problems and uh yeah i've seen some not so nice repairs but we've got this going the way that we want it and we'll still have to deal with that side piece yeah that on the last one i had to cut that one up into two or three pieces just to install that and finish out the tail light panel and I've got this uh, bottom section formed. And there it is. And you can see it's so much easier to install this as a unit that way we can position it get our lines correct as opposed to trying to uh put that piece in and then attach the uh tail light panel and yes we have overlap that's fine we're going to be trimming that up and see if we can uh get this thing really finished out in metal now we're not trying to attempt a complete metal finish we could 
but we have the option to finish it out in lead or a minimum amount of body filler and we want to get that top set into place because our deck lid lines are right and our quarter panel line is right that wraps around and we'll wire brush it off so we don't get a lot of contaminants and uh, when we're welding that'll lead to like little pinholes and now we are pushing that down to the quarter panel. Now here's a trick to go around that radius. We don't want to use a big wheel. We want to use a smaller. Otherwise it's going to make a huge mess. Make a huge, wide, ugly cut. We don't want that. Okay, getting that bottom piece trimmed out. You can see all the excess. And that's what it looks like. Now we just need to straighten out the metal. Straighten out both pieces. Here it is welded out. And now we are going to carefully grind. We don't want to go below flush. We don't want to make the metal too thin. And you can hear by the way I'm using the tool, we're not putting a lot of force or bearing down on it. Yeah, that will be for nothing if we made the metal thin and then it cracked out later. That's not, yeah, that's not what we're doing here. There it is. And, yeah, we still have a lot of work to go. We've got to go on that uh, trunk gutter side. Okay, so I'm never afraid to show the inside or the back side of the panel of where I welded. And we've come in and we've touched it up, dressed it down just slightly. But you got to remember, this is all going to have spackle paint and seam sealer in. So, yeah. That's not going to be an issue. Got it prepped. We're going to shoot just a little bit of primer in there so we don't get any rust started. We are in Texas. I can live with that. Hey, get ready. We are trying to get this thing knocked out. Thanks for watching.